Hey everybody, this is a uh, flea market finds episode and this is going to be stuff that I picked at a flea market in northern Massachusetts back on August 16th. Today's actually already uh, like September 20th, but uh, anyways, better late than never. So, uh, got some pretty decent stuff here. Let's uh, dive right in. Alright, so I came across a gentleman there who had a table with a whole lot of really old, dirty stuff on it. And... Uh, he must have been cleaning out an old barn or workshop and pulling out stuff from God knows where. But uh, the actual first item that I spotted on his uh, table that I ended up buying, and I'm going to show near the end of this video, is actually a uh, benchtop belt lacer. It's a uh, clipper style, uh, or manufacturer's name I think is clipper, and it's got two handles on it with balls on the end, and um, it's a pretty good sized one. I already have one. But I got such a great deal on it, I couldn't pass it up. And then he threw in some goodies with it. But he actually had three belt lacers there on the table. He had that one. Then he had an even larger one that I had never seen before. And it looked like it weighed a ton. So I kind of passed on that. And maybe I shouldn't have, but uh, I didn't end up buying that one. And then uh, a little later on, when I came back, because I, I came back to his table a couple of times... I came back to his table, I ended up um, going through some taps and stuff that he had there, and initially I didn't really want to get involved with buying taps or any high-speed steel bits, that kind of stuff. But he was being really generous on his pricing, and I decided, well, I looked through a couple of the boxes, and I put together these two loads right here, and he sold me these two loads right here for 15 bucks, and then he threw in this belt lacer. Uh, which is kind of cool. This is a, a small belt lacer that you would use in a vise. And uh, this particular one is also the Clipper brand belt lacer. I'm not sure what model it is. I have one like this also. But what's kind of unique about this one is... I can actually see the, uh, actually see the name on it. What's kind of cool about this one that my other one doesn't have is it has like this tool attached to a chain so you don't lose it. And even this little pair of scissors that are original to this lacer attached to the little chain. And then, of course, this is a uh, this is the pin that goes through. When you put the lace in there, this pin holds them together until you can put the uh, cording material through. I guess I don't know. I've never I've never made a uh, I've never laced a leather belt in my life. But I like this one because unlike the big clipper two-handle one, uh, I can. This, this one is definitely easily shippable. So since I now have two of these, I can probably keep one and sell the other. I really don't need. I might even sell the other big clipper one. I gotta sell at least one of the big clippers and one of the small ones. Just thought I'd mention it because again, he threw that in. As if, like, what's in here wasn't worth the 15 bucks, which, eh, you know, this one, this side over here, this is mostly just old high-speed steel stuff in here, but the main reason I grabbed this one was because it's actually loaded with, well, that's just a high-speed steel end mill. Um, it's loaded with center drills, so that's what I really wanted. Well, there's a little reamer. There's another tap that somehow ended up in here. So there's nothing to get excited about in this box right here. This box, on the other hand, uh, is where I put just a bunch of stuff that he had. And uh, what's in here is a lot of taps and some random high-speed tooling. Uh, I found this, you know, a couple of nice key seat cutters. Uh, I found this. Uh, this is a Woodruff key seat cutter. That looks like it might even be new. Old stock. This is uh, carbide inserts, square ones. There's four on that side and there's one left on this side. Don't know what those go to. This is little box here is Union Twist Drill. Oh, it's a three. Oh, that's interesting. It's a it's a three-piece tap set, but one of the taps is broken. 
tip of that tap broken off and then got a lot of these here okay and I think if I recall correctly these are, these are metric well that's 13 16 16 13 16 16 Ugh. say that five times fast all right so this is this is pretty much this entire box is loaded with taps and then some of these all right well that's an uh that's a ball end mill two flute still got the cosmoline on it so that's either new or newly sharpened these taps look like they're brand new. Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> Interesting. Then as the morning wore on, his deals just got cheaper. The stuff that had been passed over from the initial rush of, uh, you know, people that came in there and everything, if it was still laying there, he was just blowing the stuff out. Uh, case in point, he had pulled out I didn't see it the first trip over but then when I went back later it came by his table he had a very large uh, Greenfield tap and die set um, one of the big old wooden case ones and I'll tell you uh, you know some people actually uh, look for those and he was so cheap on everything that I knew that uh, I could get that thing for dirt cheap and I think I ended up getting it for like 20 bucks and then knowing that those are difficult to ship and knowing that uh, you know I didn't want to really deal with the hassle of having to ship it to sell it and knowing that like two rows over there was a guy who had brought a bunch of those sets and was asking like you know 80 bucks and up for him I knew he must be in the market you know buying and selling those so I literally picked that thing up I walked over two rows and I sold it to that dealer for I think uh, 30 or 40 bucks so I made like, I don't know, 10 or 20 bucks on the deal just by walking over. And, you know, it was definitely worth more than that if I wanted to put a little more effort in, but I didn't feel like really having to deal with it. So uh, here's a picture of that tap and die set that I took before I sold it to the other guy. And so then uh, I was looking at, uh, you know, his table there where I got the belt lacer and all that other junk and everything. And uh, he was being so cheap, I decided I'd put together another uh, group of stuff here. And uh, a lot of this stuff was already in here. And then I think I just added in, like, I saw this there. I thought, oh, that's kind of nice. So I put that together. And uh, he said, give me two bucks. Two bucks for this. So let's look at this first, just since I kind of liked it. Uh, this is a... It says Cion, I think, C-E-O-N, 208. And on this side, what caught my eye is that this says that it's made in Sweden. So I thought, well, that might not be that bad quality, even though it's just plastic. So this is an air gun, a, a blow gun, right, you know. So I haven't even checked it yet. For all I know, maybe when you put the... Uh, hose on it it just you know air comes out when you don't press the thing maybe it's maybe it's complete junk or maybe it's perfectly fine but I got that like I said with everything else in here for two bucks and then uh, there was a file decent one what the hell stuck to it then there's these things and some of you guys might know right off the bat what these things are I did not know what they were until I picked one up and looked at it. And then, you know, I saw these early on and I passed on them initially. But then because they were still sitting there, I was thinking, you know what? I'm just going to take them because I knew I was going to get them cheap and I did. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these helicoil tools. Okay? So, for those of you who don't know what a helicoil is, a helicoil is a specially made insert designed to replace damaged threads. So the way the system works is you have these helicoil inserts. They're very popular with uh, 
uh, auto automotive mechanics and uh, you actually uh, drill out the damaged threads and make the hole oversized and then you thread in the helicoil insert and then the helicoil insert will have a new hole with the with the uh, the threads that you had to have had to replace so so I'm not even quite sure exactly how these work okay but I think it has something to do with just giving the proper alignment to make sure that the new helicoil goes in perfectly fine so maybe these are archaic and have no value or maybe these are still used I don't know but I got eight of those eight of those it's another file Oh, and yeah, these files are Nicholson's, both of them. A little brush, Allen wrench, T-handled Allen wrench, several miscellaneous stamp steel wrenches. Who knows what those fit? The 25 thousandths feeler gauge. Drill bits, drill bits. Now the file. I threw this screwdriver in there because it was a Proto, which is a good brand. Here's a precision twist drill, brand new, jobber's length. I swear this says the size is 7 37ths. Is that even a, f that's, that's, that's an interesting size. This appears to be another helicoil tool Number four, number five, unk. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Hmm. Oh, there's another one. Scrap. Nice load of drill bits there. Cable TV grounding block. That's pretty much scrap. Yeah, those could come in handy sometimes. You know, I've got four of them. Garden hose clamp. Oh, there you go. There's the. If you want to repair your garden hose, does anybody even repair garden hoses anymore? They sell them so cheap now. Look at this guy must have been saving these for something. <laughs> he got. He cut these off before he threw the hose out. Oh, maybe for scrap metal. Uh, hmm. Who knows? Another cable TV grounding block. I'll tell you what, this is a pair of curved nosed tweezers, but they are actually, these are general number 401 stainless steel these actually aren't bad a little drill bit a little file a couple more taps just junk i just finished sorting through this all, all this stuff here and uh, a couple of things um first off apparently these helicoil tools are still being used because i found found them being sold used on eBay and I guess they're called pre-winders and the prices I'm seeing on these things used range anywhere from like a low of like 25 bucks to a high of like 50 bucks for one um, I'm sure some of that has to do with probably specific sizes are more sought after than others but anyways that so that's that's a good deal there buying all of those with all this other stuff for two bucks but then in the bottom, um, you know, I got all the center drills and everything out. In the bottom of the bucket there, there was a whole bunch of these things. And I have no idea what these are. So I wanted to, wanted you guys to take a look at them. And maybe somebody can tell me what the heck I've got here. So they're pretty small. And they've got like two pins on the end. They've got an interesting little shank on them too. The way the thing's got a... A taper to it 
So these appear to be something that was made to go into some sort of a tool. So does anybody recognize what these things are? Can't find any markings on them. I got these two oilers from the same gentleman that was uh, that I got the belt lacing and all that other stuff really cheap from. These are these are marked Gits, G-I-T-S. Uh, Gits Brothers Manufacturing Company of Chicago. Uh, this feels like it's plastic. So I don't know how old this might be. But they're kind of interesting. And uh, I got the two of these for a buck for the pair. So I think that was a pretty good deal. <coughs> I came across another dealer who didn't really have anything. And then I just happened to be fishing through a box of stuff. And I found this striker. And it's, uh, it's in good condition. Made in the USA. And uh, she took 50 cents for it. So for 50 cents, I'll keep it just as a spare. Seems like I'm always misplacing those. Uh, I saw this indicator stand. It's a no-name, probably an import. Uh, you know, it looks like somebody had $19.50 on here for a price at one point. Um, I asked uh, how much how much he'd take for it, and uh, he said five bucks. And I offered him three, and he took it. So I got this for three bucks because normally I wouldn't bother. I've got a couple of these now that I don't use, and you know I've sold a couple, but and this kind of thing that I hate having to go through the trouble of shipping it. Although what's nice about some of these, like this one here, is you can take this bolt out, you can actually break this down, and you can actually make it fit into a a package and ship for you know uh, like medium flat rate, even uh, or a regional box. Another dealer had this uh, set of brown and sharp dial calipers. Uh, these are 599-579s's. Pretty popular caliber. Caliper, you had 10 bucks on these. They're actually in perfect working condition and they're pretty clean, relatively speaking. The problem with them is that the plastic crystal is missing. So that's the only thing that's wrong with these. But they seem to repeat and they work perfect. And uh, I actually ended up getting these for eight bucks. So it might be worth it for me to actually invest in putting a, um, whatchamacallit, a crystal on that one. Or I might just sell them as is and let somebody else deal with that. And then uh, another dealer came across this, uh, I think this is called a, uh, a filer, a belt filer. It takes a narrow sanding belt. And I think I've seen these called uh, belt filers or something like that. But uh, it's actually a pretty handy tool. You can actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you can loosen this right here and this will swivel so you can and it's got this long, thin profile, so you can reach into a tight area. And it's an air-powered tool. And this particular one, this piece right here, is supposed to have a... There used to be a, a flat piece that went right here. And it acted as an edge guide so that you could uh, uh, keep this from... You know, keep this kind of in alignment. So he had five bucks on this. I gave the five for this because I, I think even with this broken, it was still worth the five. This roller also has got some kind of crud all over it. It's going to have to be cleaned up. Some kind of gummy material. I don't know what. I actually already have one of these. I haven't even gotten around to using it, but I did test it. So this has got a little bit of a different setup on it the way this is. But they're... So this is a Belton B20S made in Japan. And this is the one I had. This is a Mitoko Kiko Limited, Tokyo, Japan. So, you know, they're they're virtually identical in design, so kind of makes me think. Oh, that's interesting. This one's got a platen on it. And mine is missing the platen. And I didn't even know that. So, well, there you go. That was worth it for me to buy this just for this piece right here. I could take this piece and put it on here and make mine more complete. Yeah. 
This is a blacksmith's tool. Not sure exactly what it's called. Found this. Uh, guy wanted five bucks for it. I offered him three and they counted at four. So I got these for four bucks and they're, like I said, I don't know what they're called. Um, you know, I envision a blacksmith being able to reach in and grab like a horseshoe with this thing and then hold it while he's beating it on an anvil. I just bought it because uh, I figured it would be a neat tool to have occasionally if I have something hot that I need to pick up. You know, I didn't see any uh, maker's marks on it anywhere. It, you know, judging from the looks of it, it, it's pretty old the way this is made. I'm not an expert on vintage iron tools, but this all... You know, it has all the markings that indicate that this started out life and was pounded into this shape. And so I think this thing is really old. Well, it might be more of an antique, but I don't think it's tremendously valuable. So I'm just going to use it for picking up pot stuff. All those of you who know me know I have a weak spot for CB radios. So when I spotted this, uh, this old Cobra sitting there, I had to ask... Um, and when the guy started telling me the story, he says, oh, he says, I had the microphone with it, but a guy bought that earlier this morning, and he described it as a, um, basically when he described it, I knew what he was talking about. He was talking about a, a D-104, and he said it had the eagle on the back, so it was a D-104 Silver Eagle. I don't know what condition it was in. I asked him how much he got for that. He said 40 bucks. So then when I asked him how much for the radio, he says, make me an offer. I said, I don't know, 10 bucks? He says, sure. So I got this radio for 10 bucks. It's a Cobra base station. Uh, what I like about it is it's a 142 GTL, which means it's a sideband radio. So it's 40 channel sideband. Somebody kind of, well, cosmetically did a job on it here by drilling a hole right through the front for uh, this little switch, which is probably going to be um, extra channels. Feels like the switch is, oh, no, it's an up and down. Okay, so it's a three position toggle switch mini toggle that they stuck right here in the face that's probably going to be extra channels uh so somebody did some mods to this thing you know whether or not they did a good job or not i don't know um let's just i'm not going to get too i'm not really going to get into this testing this really because uh we'll save this for the uh the classic uh vintage cb radio series that i've been doing uh my collection but just for the heck of it just plugged it in and that's a good sign. You know, power's up. The LED light's up. I have no idea what position the uh, selector would have to be in. Well, this old Cobra definitely has some signs of life. I just threw a piece of wire in the back antenna connection and checked out the pinning and it's uh, this top middle pin. So plenty of noise, and when I turn the channel selector, it does change, so it would indicate to me that the, the receiver is live. And just for the heck of it, uh, these two pins will key it. I don't want to do that without a proper antenna or a dummy load on there for any length of time, but just for the heck of it, you can see that the TX light, transmit light lights up, and the uh, power meter does go up. So it, it doesn't seem like it's a dead radio, probably just going to need a good cleaning and Maybe a little bit of touch up and it should be fine. So that was a good deal for 10 bucks. All right, uh, next up, here's a mag base. Uh, this is an Enco mag base. So it's an import, but it's uh, kind of a decent quality one. No uh, other rods or clamps or anything with it, just a, a naked mag base, which normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother making an offer on something like that. Um, but I spotted this clamp which looks like it's a Sterrett. Pretty sure that's a Sterrett clamp. A lot of these Sterrett's weren't marked. And it has two clamping nuts on it too, which is nice. So um, ended up getting the two of these for five bucks. And I found this pair of goggles at a dealer. Uh, and what's nice about these is, I don't know, I thought these flipped up, but they don't. Yeah, so I almost didn't bother buying these because I, I was looking for a pair that, that flip up. But um, I figured I could change the lens to a lighter shade. 
I just want um, a goggle that I can use for my oxyacetylene instead of using the big uh, auto darkening helmet which covers my whole face so anyways I know I have some more lenses that will fit this probably but I think they're also dark I don't know what this is that's in here it's probably a shade 10 yeah, I can't tell and then this right here was probably the deal of the day um, <clears throat> This is a uh, micrometer stand, a benchtop micrometer stand. So you basically you clamp your micrometer in here, and that allows you to uh, keep one hand uh, one hand free to hold something in it. So this is good for inspection work and stuff like that. And you know, it had a look to it. I thought, well, it might be Mitotoyo, and then uh, upon closer inspection, I couldn't find anything on it except it does say made in Japan here so I'm pretty confident based on the fact that the last one of these that I had that was definitely a Minotoyo looked just like this so I think this is an early unmarked Minotoyo um, I got that for three bucks that's probably the best deal I made that day all right gonna wrap up this episode and uh, just wanted to give you guys a look at this uh, belt clipper lacer uh, so it's the, the clipper is the brand and it's called the belt lacer and uh, this is a number six I'm sorry it's a, it says number three six inch so I don't know if that means that this is good for three to six inch or if it's good for up to six inch belts um, not like I said I'm not I've never laced a belt in my life so I couldn't tell you but uh, this one is the same model as what I have now, but it looks a little bit different. Uh, for instance, the shape of the handles is different. It's like the other one I have right now has just ball handles on the end. This, this looks completely different. Where the handles go in on the other one, they just kind of stick into the socket and nothing holds them in. These are actually pinned with, uh, looks like cotter pins. On the other hand, the little tag here with the name and everything on it and the part numbers are, are the same shape. They're just the spelling and the layout of the lettering is a little bit different. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. So I certainly didn't need an, uh, another one of these. Uh, I've never used the one that I have now. I may eventually use it. I do have, uh, you know, my old Hendy lathe that has a belt drive. Not my Hendy. Sorry. The Vernon. So there we go. There's the Vernon lathe cone head lathe and there is an approximately three inch wide leather belt but the guy gave me such a crazy good deal on this thing that I couldn't turn it down um, this might even go this might even be worth my while to go through the trouble of trying to ship this to somebody because uh, you know it's a it's it's heavy but uh, online on eBay these tend to bring you know a hundred bucks or more uh, the other thing is, I, I bought it from him. No sooner do I buy this from him than he says, oh, he says, I, I got these things that go with it. And he comes out with two boxes of the hooks. So these are uh, number four and a half. And uh, it says for quarter inch, for number four and a half for heavy duty belts quarter of an inch thick so that's loaded with these things that's a brand new box and these are number threes and number three it says for thin belts over medium sized pulleys and some of these look like they may have been used on it it says uh, there were 12 cards in here so I don't know if any have been used or what but uh, so my understanding is that, that these are actually pretty sought after. I haven't uh, looked it up on uh, eBay, but then as if that wasn't enough, he goes over to, a back, uh, to the back of his pickup truck and he gets this out. And he says, oh, you can take this too. <laughs> so he gave me this roll of leather belt to go with it for free. So you know, the end here is a little dirty and damaged, but I don't know.
I don't know if this can still be used or not because it's it's kind of stiff, but well. So all right, that's going to conclude this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the, this tool pick episode. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And as always, please hit the like button. Take care.